Good morning. Welcome to Palm Sunday at Trinity United Methodist Church in Hutchinson, Kansas. We have some announcements to share with you this morning to get us started. As you know, access to the church throughout the week has been restricted. And if you are by some chance needing to get in, please call the church office and then someone can come to the door. However, we want to make sure that our staff is safe, which is why this church is locked at this time. We do need your email addresses. We'd like for you to call the church office and share those addresses with us if you haven't already. The number at the church office is 620-665-5547. You can receive information about what's happening at church through email, as well as receive a copy of the tower each week electronically, and also a link to our services each Sunday morning. So if we have that email, that will be helpful to us. Looking ahead to next week, our Easter service offering is for the Benevolence Fund. And if you are interested in participating in the Benevolence Fund offering, please write your check to Trinity United Methodist Church. And in the memo, please write Easter offering. If you have a candle, I invite you to light the candle at this time representing the light of Christ that surrounds us in worship. As we gather together, let us go back to join the parade of palms on Palm Sunday years ago as Jesus entered Jerusalem. Grab something to wave, perhaps a towel, a piece of paper or a broomstick. Wave in praise during our opening hymn. Let us stand and praise God together. Hosanna, loud Hosanna. My name is Carrie Olenberger, and I'm the Director of Family Ministries here at Trinity. And I am standing here in the midst of all these palm branches, and I must admit, doesn't quite feel like a normal Palm Sunday to me. Usually we have children walking up the aisles with our choir, and they're waving their palm branches, and our church is singing. Things just don't always go as planned. So I was thinking about that first Palm Sunday. It didn't really end up like we might have expected either. Jesus came riding into town on a donkey, which meant peace, and everyone was shouting and singing and praising his name, and there were shouts of Hosanna. And just a few days later, 
those same people were calling for him to be killed. Things don't always go as planned. Our palms themselves have a similar story. We use them on Palm Sunday and we wave them to praise Jesus. And then we take these very palms and almost a year later, we burn them to make the ashes that we use on Ash Wednesday that help us to remember our sins at the beginning of Lent. Things don't always go as planned. But let's think back to that first Palm Sunday. Jesus was crucified by the people who were praising his name earlier in the week, but three days later, he rose from the dead on Easter morning, which was like the best day ever. Things don't always go as planned. This year, school years have gotten sh cut short. We've, we're missing out on fun things like birthday parties and sports and activities. Our parents are probably extra worried and we're having to stay home and not see anyone. But I hope we can learn a lesson from these palms and from Jesus. Things are pretty tough right now, but there will be good things and better days that come on the other side. We just have to look for them. Would you pray with me? Dear God, Thank you for always being with us when things don't go as planned and for helping us to remember that just like you rose on Easter morning, better days will come again to us as well. Thank you so much for our Trinity family and I especially thank you for our children and youth today. Would you join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the 19th chapter of Luke, beginning with the 28th verse. Jesus went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples saying, go into the village ahead of you and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. And then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their clothes on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. And as he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent the stones would shout out. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Don't you like a good parade? There's always a sense of anticipation as you get ready. If you're watching the parade, you need to get there a bit early just to get your chair in the right place and make sure you're not facing the sun. Or you may be part of the parade. I remember years ago when our boys were young and we were part of the 4th of July parade on our four-wheelers. You see, we were all three dressed as Abraham Lincoln with our long beards. It was a great time. Now today, can you feel the excitement 
of a palm parade that changed the world years ago. Maybe it's hard to think about celebrating with all the stuff that's happening in the world right now. Let us be reminded that the joy of the Lord is not dictated by circumstances. The deep joy from God depends on our relationship with that peasant king on the donkey. And that relationship is always there to give us strength for the journey. Therefore, we can celebrate and give thanks. Let us pray. God of celebration, take us back to experience Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Pull us out of the crowd and speak your truths into our lives. Help us remember that Jesus' life, death, and resurrection is the source of all hope for eternity. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, our humble King. Amen. Let's think about the people who were in the crowd that day when Jesus rode into Jerusalem. I'd like for you to maybe name where you might have been in the crowd that day. Some were there because they were really curious. They were just there by chance. They heard something was happening at the other end of town. Others were there seeking healing and hope from this healer they had heard about. They heard about this blind man that could finally see. The disciples were there as they had been walking by Jesus' side and they were going to this new path with their master. Now some were there to destroy Jesus because he was a threat to the religious authorities. Where are you in the crowd of onlookers today? Curious? Needing healing? A faithful disciple? Or someone who doesn't even believe in a Messiah at all? Let's take a moment to ponder what those disciples were feeling that day. Did they have expectations? Oh, they'd given up a lot. They'd left their homes and their jobs to follow Jesus. They had heard a lot of lessons taught from the hillside, and they were part of many miracles. 500 hungry people fed from a young boy's lunch. A lame man who could walk. And Lazarus, who was dead walked out of the tomb alive. Here they were, finally, in a time of triumph, expecting to take over Jerusalem as Jesus is crowned king. Yet on Good Friday, five days later, they had no idea that Jesus would be wearing a different kind of crown, one made with thorns. Did the disciples ever think, I wonder what happens after the parade. Did Jesus' followers know that their lives would be turned upside down? After the parade, Jesus would be arrested and all his friends would run away. Jesus would be tried and convicted an innocent man, being tried as a criminal, while his dear friend Peter denied him three times by a fireside. Jesus would be crucified and die a brutal death on a wooden cross with only one disciple there. Where did everyone go? Today, let us acknowledge that God stayed with Jesus after the parade as he suffered and died. Because of Jesus' example and time of resurrection, we can be assured that God is with us, especially during times of suffering. I have been contemplating how the COVID-19 virus has changed the landscapes of our lives. There are no routines, limited human contact, not much to get ready for, and a fog of unknowing that blocks our life view. I remember enjoying my Friday morning routines with my coffee friends, and now I realize how important those times are, those precious moments that we all need to celebrate 
when the pandemic ends. I am anticipating a time of celebration when all of us can meet again face to face. Doesn't it seem that life changed quickly in a matter of days and the path ahead is unclear? Now, there are several spiritual truths we can practice from today's gospel story. The first spiritual truth is the reality that God is with us. God led Jesus and the disciples through the worst of times. Jesus, four days after the parade, found himself in a garden all by himself, pleading that the cup of suffering he would experience could pass. He cried out, If possible, Lord, let this cup pass from me. Jesus did not want to go down the hard road ahead of him, yet as he struggled, he surrendered, giving everything, all his concerns, all his fears, into God's care. When he stated, Nevertheless, Lord, your will be done, not mine. God is with us during the worst of times. Another spiritual truth is that God never abandoned Jesus. Now, yes, Jesus cried out from the cross as he suffered, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yes, Jesus felt alone. The reality is that God did not abandon Jesus, and God does not abandon us. When Jesus died, the veil of the temple was torn in two, and the sacrifice for all our sins was paid for all eternity. Do you feel abandoned and separated from God? Let us revisit Paul's words found in Romans 8. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. God is with us when we feel abandoned. And one final spiritual truth is that God transformed the bad into good. God's redemptive plan shaped salvation for Christ's death so We no longer have to be separated from God. God was there as salvation was born in a time of darkness, death, and confusion. Christ became a bridge from our sin to forgiveness and eternal life. God was there bringing good from the horrible things that happened. And yes, God will bring good from our present trials and tribulations that we are facing as a country, communities, families, and individuals. God is with us and transforms bad things into good. I want you to think a moment about your own lives and bring the spiritual truths into new understandings in your path, your faith journey. You may be wanting your cup of suffering to end right now. Take heart. Because God is with you. Do you feel alone? Perhaps the feelings of isolation, physical and emotional separation just seems overwhelming right now. Feelings of abandonment can scream loudly in our souls and create a sense of despair. But let us remember the truth. God does not abandon us. Take heart. God is with you. Look in anticipation for God's working in your life. Find new strength and a fresh perspective, being born anew through times of darkness and confusion. That's what salvation looks like. New beginnings, new hope, and eternal assurance to be with God in eternity. Brothers and sisters, this virus will pass, and we will get to the other side, and there we will experience new life. In the meantime, 
Let us embrace the reality that God is with us as a guide and a source of strength. When the parade ends and ordinary life goes on, God is there. After the parade, we persevere. Another parade is coming. And until then, let us embrace and believe the life-changing reality that God will give us what we need when we need it. God is here, and we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Watch. The next parade is coming. Let us pray. Guiding God, on this holy day of Palm Sunday, we join the crowd with our praises, and yet we remember, too, that this wonderful parade for your son becomes a parade and a journey carrying a cross. By taking that path, there is hope, grace, love, and salvation for all. Lord, enter our lives, our churches, our cities, and our countries once again today. Heal us, Lord. Transform us. Renew us. Draw us closer to you in this journey of Holy Week. Empower us with strength and courage and with the assurance that you are with us, world without end. Amen. Carrie shared with us this morning that things don't always go as planned. True, yet we still continue moving down this hard road. The road where we will all see that next parade. We will all wave our palms during that next parade. We know that during this time, God does not abandon us. God will go with us through the most difficult of times. We'd ask that during this difficult time, you not abandon the church with your giving. Please continue to remember that the work of the church goes on and you can mail your church offerings, your tithes and your offerings to 1602 North Main Street in Hutchinson, Kansas, 67501. If you are a member of another church, please make sure that you extend your offerings and your tithes to your church. Let's continue worshiping together as we sing all glory, laud, and honor.
encourage us all to experience the events of Holy Week by reading the last few chapters of each one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Experience what they experienced. Remember and give thanks. On Holy Thursday, this upcoming Thursday the 9th, we will be showing a Holy Thursday service. And during that time, we're going to be encouraging you to take Holy Communion in your home. So know that you can go and find the elements around your home to represent the body and blood of Jesus. Some crackers, some bread, some juice, some water. Bring those together as we share in this Holy Communion service on Thursday. Also, we will be sharing in Holy Communion on the Day of Resurrection, Easter Sunday. And so it begins. We walk this week from palms now to passion. It's Jesus we seek. Each moment we walk through these days now in the week ahead. And may God who now blesses and keeps you in love, whose face shines upon you with grace from above, who looks on you with such joy and such favor, be with you in the week ahead. Go in God's peace. Amen.